just wanted to, to build a little bit off of Richard's good comments and, and reflect on where we've come with Feed the Future and where we've come sort of in the whole nature, the whole scheme of things with agriculture, food security, and nutrition over the past uh, few years. So I, I am not a, a USAID uh, lifer. Uh, so I came into the agency three years ago. Um, I'm an agricultural economist by training, um, and I spent the 10 years before I came into USAID uh, helping to form and then lead an organization called the Partnership to Cut Hunger and Poverty in Africa. And this is an organization that, that brought together U.S. universities, it brought together African universities, African NGOs, U.S. civil society, uh, heads of state, basically to, to refocus attention on why a long-term investment in agriculture is important to resolving not only food security issues, uh, but also long-term poverty issues. So this is an organization and a whole constellation of organizations in Washington uh, working with partners, specifically in Africa, uh, trying to, I think, disrupt uh, the US, U.S. trend at that time, which was uh, really ramping up our provision of food aid to deal with, with crises instead of returning to where we were sort of in the 1980s, beginning of the 1980s, in investing in the roots of agriculture, not only in, in sub-Saharan Africa, but, but poor countries in, in Asia. So really, you know, after 1980, after sort of the initial successes of a green revolution, you know, which we saw most, uh, most apparently here in, in Asia, the U.S. and other donors had really gotten away from investing in agriculture and invested more in these emergency fixes. So, um, so that's where I'm coming from. This is so I, I wanted you to know that that be the future is a very personal uh, thing for for me and for uh, many colleagues uh, around the world that you know saw this as an important moment um, and were absolutely thrilled uh, when President Obama, when the new administration came in. Um, and almost immediately signaled uh, that food security, nutrition, agriculture, long-term uh, response to poverty uh, was going to be a very, very important priority for the administration. So, so here we are, uh, five years on, four to five years on, as Richard was saying, and, and, and what's happened so far? So we, we, we witnessed this, this incredible return to agriculture. Uh, Feed the Future you know, really, really got started after we saw the devastating impacts of the 2007-2008 food price uh, crisis. Um, you will remember that, the hardships, the civil instability in many countries, rice prices, uh, uh, growing, uh, uh, the, uh, the problems with exporting rice really caused a lot of issues, not only in this country, but kind of reverberated around the world, uh, Latin America and, and Asia. So we were thrilled, uh, again, in 2009 at the G8 L'Aquila Summit, when President Obama committed the U.S. to the, what became Feed the Future. Uh, at that time, he pledged $3.5 billion over three years, leveraging $18 billion in commitments from other donors. So this was a major, major shift of, of U.S. policy, and one uh, that other donors took, took notice of and began to follow us back into agriculture space. But this initiative, and I think this is really important for this gathering, uh, to think about. This initiative was about resources, but not only about resources. You know, in launching Feed the Future, President Obama asked us to do business differently to meet the challenge of feeding 9 billion by 2050. So to do business differently, uh, to do agriculture differently, in a way, um, as Richard said, that not only lifts poor smallholders out of poverty, and it, but also improves nutrition, uh, shrinks pretty dramatically our environmental footprint, um, and so on. How else has Be the Future been a different way of doing business? Well, first, President Obama asked the USAID uh, to lead this whole of government initiative. So the first time, USAID is really in, 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 in the driver and the coordinating seat for an initiative that really harnesses the energies, the resources, the powers of agencies across the U.S. government. State Department, uh, USDA, uh, Commerce, USTR are all partners with us. Um, and again, you know, with my outsider's eyes, I can see the difference that this has made. Um, it makes a difference to go into a country and realize, I remember going to Zambia a few years ago, 
and, and noticing the very tight relationship that the USA Mission Director and the Ambassador of Zambia had right now, had at that time. Um, and the Ambassador, you know, when he was going in to see the President and when he was going in to see the, the, the Cabinet in Zambia, food security, you know, was always on his list of talking points. Now, in my career, that had never been the case. You know, the Ministry of Agriculture and Agriculture never, never had had that kind of visibility. And State has been our very close partner in really working to, to elevate that at a political level um, with the, the strong, strong collaboration of, of State Department and our other agencies. So, <clears throat> how else, besides this, the whole of government initiative, how else is be the future different? President Obama has asked us support to support country-owned priorities um, as sort of key to sustainability. Uh, he's asked, again, this is critical, I think, for our discussions, he's asked us to expand our collaboration with other donor partners and with the private sector. Because we know we're not going to solve these very, very um, immense development problems with public resources alone. It's not through public resources that we're going to end poverty. You know, we need the resources from these other partners, particularly the private sector. President Obama asked us to deliver on sustainable and accountable commitments, and we've started that. I know all of you have seen and, and contributed to the, the, the progress report, uh, the, the, the statistics, the database that, that we have online about Be the Future. Be the Future, though, <coughs> You know, was also not you know, something made up out of whole cloth. Be the Future also reinforced and built upon some of the very exciting trends, some of the very exciting um, important innovations that USAID was already embarked upon. But it brought greater geographic and subject matter focus. So I remember when I came into USAID, you know, there was a lot of buzz, you know, we're going to reduce um, our agriculture uh, geography, we're going to think about what are the zones of influence where we're going to concentrate our, tech, our activity, concentrate and focus for the kind of impact that Richard was talking about with us today. Concentrate and focus. Already USAID, before Feed the Future, had begun working along a value chain. So not just thinking about uh, the technology and the innovation at the farmer's field, but also what's the market for it at the other end. Who's going to process it? What's the consumer demand? What's the financing environment? So those are things that USAID had already embarked upon. Be the Future brought greater, greater attention to it um, and put it in a food security context. So these, Be the Future really reinforced and built upon these important innovations that were underway in USAID field mission programs. So the turn toward value chains. Um, is really critical for scaling. I know we're going to come back to that time and again today. So scaling is not just a new initiative. So turn back to agriculture. Scaling is not just a new is not a new initiative. It's it's really a story of how we bring our efforts together. How do we double down now uh, to to really examine uh, the progress that we've made, the trajectory of our Feed the Future programs, um, and how do we build on that progress? How do we further expand our partnerships? to significantly scale population level impacts over the next several years. So we're not the only organizations grappling with this. Um, I'm pleased we've got so many partners with us here in the public and private sector, organizations who are also struggling with this issue of how to scale results. How do we get past fragmentation um, and into something of, of population level impacts? Um, we've got with us uh, Richard Cole uh, from the uh, his own company, his own consulting organization, uh, and we've got uh, from the CG centers, the International Research Centers, Jackie Hughes. So these are two, two, uh, two prominent thinkers um, on scaling issues, one from the public sector and one sort of helping uh, public and private sector organizations think about what it takes, you know, what do we actually have to do differently uh, to scale. So we'll be hearing from them shortly. Uh, lastly, I just wanted to conclude we talked about Feed the Future, you know, as bringing agriculture uh, back uh, in a very different way uh, to the USA, but not only USA, US government uh, initiative. We talked about scaling, really building on a number of positive trends that had already uh, begun to surface in USAID. Now, let's just talk a little bit about um, sort of reviewing the objectives of the scaling glee, um, but in, a, in an oblique way. Um, 
how do we move forward from here? I mean, you heard from Richard about um, how we will take this forward in our uh, procurement plans and the portfolio reviews that are coming coming up. We ask you all before the missions, before coming here, to draft scaling plans, um, and we really have appreciated uh, the great effort that's gone into that. Um, a lot of thoughtfulness, a lot of work, a lot of consultation, very evident. Um, and so we ask you to, to do those scaling plans. Great. One thing to make, to give us a, a great base for our discussions here, um, but also sort of just to, to get on the table, what, what do people think about scaling? What, what is scaling? Some, some missions talked about single <coughs> agricultural technologies, others outlined whole systems of technology improvements needed. Um, and so you know, bring those to the table here. Um, we've given you some preliminary feedback already. Um, but this glee is about sorting through some of the questions that, that came out of those, those, uh, those draft scaling plans. And so some of the questions that we'll be examining over the next couple of days is um, how can we assess uh, what's the potential of the innovations we're thinking about scaling? How can we think about their impact over time? How can we think about the potential for them to be sustained in, in the areas that are key to feed the future um, and affecting poverty and nutrition? Another area of inquiry is how are we going to recognize special opportunities that exist to make progress in a particular area? Um, what political commitments, uh, what national or regional organizations uh, may be interested in partnering with us to drive policy reform and implementation or attract private sector investment? Another area is, is how are we going to frame, assess alternative scaling possibilities? How do we stack one against another? And finally, you know, how do we think about what the constraining elements uh, may be and how do opportunities, what opportunities exist to alleviate these constraints? So the main message, though, is there's no blueprint. Um, we're really here to learn from each other over the next couple of days. Um, we're here to create an environment uh, for, for sharing, not only here in this room, but also after we go home. I think that was one of the, the really thrilling things about Addis, is people realizing that um, it's not just Ethiopia facing this issue. There's, there's, uh, there are partners in Zambia. There are partners in, in Ghana who are facing the same issues. And I think those connections are built, those uh, communication pathways are, are built not only between USAID missions, but with external partners to help solve uh, problems that, that, uh, and opportunities that are coming up um, in scaling. So um, we're very much interested in creating that kind of community of practice uh, that will remain after we go home. So, and we are putting these, uh, Zachary Baquet, you were introduced to him earlier today, and his colleagues, Julie McCarty, I think is, is here with us. Um, we have created a, a space in our, on our Agilinks website uh, to pull all of the presentations and materials from not only the scaling glees, but also a number of background materials. Um, and we are hosting a series of webinars which already started back in October. So we we'll continue, this is really, uh, we're in the middle of this discussion about scaling. Uh, we'll, we'll continue it through the portfolio reviews um, and through procurement season, but we will continue to assist you with, with materials uh, through that Agrilink site. To learn more about scaling and how you can contribute to this growing body of knowledge, please visit agrilinks.org scaling.